All right, so in this video, we're looking immediately at the mask and how we turn this uh, terrain or extract the regions of this terrain we want to create rocks on. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and type Hopefield mask by feature. And this is sort of just the go-to node when you want to go and grab some parts of your terrain. And we can see that by default, it's already finding us some sort of uh, these cliff areas. Uh, but it's avoiding these these uh, sort of actually extremely sharp cliffs and only grabbing us areas within a certain band of uh, slope angles. Now, I just want to grab everything over a certain angle. So I'm going to make this a simple linear gradient. The way I did that was going and clicking the cog and hitting linear. Next up, we're going to pull up, uh, pull these two values close together. And if we just shimmy the min and max slope angle a little bit, we can start to isolate the areas that we want. We can see now we're getting all of the cliffs throughout the entire environment. But uh, if we go and have another quick look at the result that I was getting earlier, we can see that actually I'm not just getting the cliffs, I'm also grabbing a lot of these convex regions. And I think this really added to the overall appearance. So in order to expand this mask, we can just put down another height field mask by feature, chain it in directly after the previous one. And we're gonna turn off mask by slope and turn on mask by curvature. And we see nothing. Well, first of all, we need to make sure that our combine method is set to maximum with existing, which means we get the combined result of both masks. Next up, mask by curvature just requires a little bit of fiddling with to get to some sensible values. You can click compute range and you can see we start to get some little dots in different places, um, but really we just want to go and manually shimmy this down until we see a bit more red. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, but at the moment, it's picking out both the convex and the concave areas. That means sort of bulges and peaks, uh, uh, sorry, bulges and dips. And I only really care about the bulges. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this once again to linear. And now we can see that we're avoiding or excluding the kind of valley regions and only grabbing those peak regions. I think I'm getting a little bit too much of this now. So we're gonna keep that size. You can see as you tweak the max curvature, I just encourage you to play with it to see how that feels. Um, and you can see, I really, really do want to get these kind of like ex extruded bulging areas, um, but I don't want to have uh, it everywhere like it currently is. And I think what I can do is I can make this uh, a round gradient instead. We're going to see we're going to get way less, but then as we pull this value down, we're going to start to get just those little areas uh, that kind of appear interesting uh, to place rocks on. You can see that we're getting these kind of straight lines here, and that's just an artifact of this terrain. It's not a particularly detailed or intricate terrain that's been created. Uh, and so we have some of these sort of weird uh, little kind of features coming through, but it's fine. It's not going to be visible in the end result. Okay, so we've masked the regions that we want to generate rocks on, but actually for now, uh, I don't really care about areas outside of the playable zone. I only really care about this region of the environment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a height field crop. I'm gonna crop this terrain, maybe even before we do the masking, now that I think about it. There's no reason to be masking all that stuff we're not using anyway. And you can, of course, uh, just position using these parameters, but I just tend to find it much nicer to, uh, to set these things up with kind of visual guides. So I'm just gonna create a little box. And then once this box is there, we're gonna plug it into the terrain and then we can go ahead and move that box around. And you can see nice and quick that we're not really spending too much time waiting for all of this to compute. It just happens nice and fast and on the fly. Okay, so this is broadly speaking the playable area of the terrain. We could go ahead and be a little bit more aggressive uh, about the regions that we want to generate rocks on. Uh, and by aggressive, I mean we could, we could shrink uh, the size uh, in, in certain axes, for example. Uh, actually, I made this nice interactive thing and then I started immediately tweaking parameters like a fool. Um, so, you know, we could hone in a little bit more, uh, but this might be a little bit overzealous. Uh, we, we can always go back and modify this later. So now we've identified the area that we want to generate these, these rock or cliff meshes on. Okay, so this we can immediately kind of group up as our first little operation or bit of logic, which is mask terrain. And let's even go ahead and call this 01. And the next step of the uh, the process that we need to do is create those kind of mesh uh, sheets or that mesh skin. Um, so we're going to not just mask the terrain, but we're also going to uh, create those kind of like meshes that are going to describe uh, the, the, where the cliffs are going to be and the actual pieces of geometry we're going to extrude. So we'll look at that next. 